Whether you're an astronaut or not, you've probably thought about what it would be like to live on the moon. But what if I told you that there's a way to make life on the moon easier? NASA is considering building an oxygen pipeline on the lunar south pole to help astronauts survive. They believe that it could provide enough oxygen for them to breathe and do a lot more. The idea is being explored as part of NASA's Artemis program, which aims to send humans back into space to colonize the moon and use the moon as a stepping stone to Mars. With space travel exploration and the potential it holds for humanity becoming more and more prominent, scientists are constantly thinking of new ways to make this plan more feasible and seamless. This is one of the latest ideas to arise in the space travel news. The plan is to build an oxygen pipeline that will transport oxygen to various locations on the lunar south pole. As I said earlier, in the near future, NASA hopes to launch more Artemis missions and they think an oxygen pipeline will help make these missions more convenient for astronauts. How has NASA been transporting oxygen for previous missions? How feasible is this new plan? I will be looking at these and a lot more in today's video on High Tech. Stay tuned to the end to find out all we know about this new development in the space exploration industry. However, before we proceed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you are the first to know about new developments in the space industry and more. Why is NASA looking for new ways to transport oxygen for missions? As the popular saying goes, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You might be wondering why NASA needs a new oxygen transportation system. What is wrong with the old system? Well, according to the Chief Science Officer at Lunar Resources Inc. at NASA, Pete Carreri, NASA has plans to transport oxygen by using rovers. However, this method has its flaws. Carreri revealed issues with NASA's current plans for transferring oxygen through rovers. In an attempt to solve these issues, Carreri submitted a proposal to NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts NIAC, program. He was one of the 14 research teams that received $175,000 to develop their concepts. So Carreri came up with a lunar oxygen pipeline. Here's all we know about this idea. The intended lunar pipeline is formally known as the Lunar South Pole Oxygen Pipeline (LSPOP). This pipeline would connect to NASA's Lunar South Pole Ice Extraction Hub. If you didn't know, NASA is not the only one interested in the Lunar South Pole. China, Russia and more are also interested in the Lunar South Pole because it contains massive amounts of ice and other resources just beneath the Moon's surface. These resources are very important to NASA, but the ice is of utmost importance, especially in regard to making space travel more convenient for astronauts. How? Well, that ice will be critical to NASA's aspirations to create a permanent human presence on the Moon. The ice can be mined and turned into drinking water and oxygen for respiration, as well as rocket fuel. Carreri stated in a recent statement released on NASA's website that the current funded in situ oxygen extraction activities include bottling the oxygen in pressurized gas tanks or liquefying and storing it in diwars. Trucking tanks or diwars to various facilities for usage is required in either technique. Because of the long distances, a resource extraction area will be from a human habitat or liquefaction plant. The process of moving this oxygen on rovers is more energy intensive than the extraction process and is thought to be the most expensive aspect of obtaining in situ oxygen for use on the moon. To put it another way, NASA's aim is to store ice in cryogenic pressure tanks and carry it on lunar rovers. They will very certainly have to carry the ice closer to the moon's equator as lunar dwellings will also require the increased sunshine that the region would give. Meanwhile, Carreri's lunar pipeline plan would ensure that lunar inhabitants had uninterrupted access to oxygen. In addition, one of the benefits of this idea is that it is environmentally safe. Unlike pipes that we have on Earth, a leak on the Moon would not contaminate or harm the atmosphere. Because the Moon lacks an atmosphere, oxygen would simply escape into space. The benefits obviously outweigh the cons, so it's a win for all if this plan is brought to life. How feasible is this plan? This sounds like a great idea that will help NASA access a lot of resources that can be beneficial to humanity. However, this sounds great in theory. How practical is this plan? And how can it be brought to life? According to Peter Carreri, Lunar Resources will test a variety of lunar pipeline concepts beginning with a 5km design. In his words, he said, Our beginning concept is for a 5km pipeline to transmit oxygen gas from an oxygen production source, such as our molten regolith electrolysis MRE extraction site, or any other source to an oxygen storage or liquefaction facility near a lunar colony. 
If NASA ever approves the Lunar South Pole Oxygen Pipeline for the Artemis lunar missions, it will be built in parts on the Moon before being assembled into its full length. The pipeline will very certainly be made of aluminium, which is highly abundant at the Lunar South Pole. Hence, there is no question of the shortage of materials needed to actualize these plans. It seems like Carreri has everything under control, and the plan is set for success. If this plan proves to be successful, it can revolutionize space travel and the human race's migration to Mars. Of course, it is not wise to put all your eggs in one basket. There are some alternatives that NASA is considering. Another proposal under consideration by NASA's NIAC program is Titan Air, a hybrid aircraft design that might fly the seas of Saturn's moon, Titan, to collect samples. The space agency has published a comprehensive list of the stunning space concepts it sees as game changers for astronomy, Earth research and human space exploration. While the thought of living on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, may seem like an exciting and adventure-filled opportunity, the reality is that it's currently not possible for humans to call it home. With a thick atmosphere of nitrogen and methane and bone-chilling temperatures averaging at a staggering minus 180 degrees Celsius, the surface of Titan is not a hospitable environment for human life. The terrain is also covered in a treacherous layer of liquid methane and ethane, making movement nearly impossible. But as science and technology continue to advance, who knows? Maybe one day we will have the means to overcome these challenges and make the impossible possible. For now, Titan remains a distant and unexplored world waiting for us to uncover its secrets. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video. This plan will help save NASA money in the long run, but it might take a while before it's achieved. Are you feeling optimistic about this plan? What do you think about this idea? Do you think it's a great one or is it an unrealistic idea? Are there any alternatives that you might want to suggest or perhaps a few adjustments to this idea? Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments section. I look forward to discussing them with you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it.